Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, back from the stamp show doing some crafting. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't know, I'm feeling silly. I think it's all the embossing powder fumes gone to my head. Oh, wow. All right, so uh, oh, by far the most requested product you guys wanted to see me use was the stained glass, st uh, stained glass stamp. So today I'm going to show you how you use this with a regular rubber stamp to make a stained glass look panel. And I love it because you can use it with the stamps you already have. This was by DRS Designs. I don't know where the package to that ended up, but this is the square one that I got and what it looked like. Um, and here are some experiments. This was my first one. This is really cool. I tried it on the Recollections cardstock um, from Michaels, um, and but it, it didn't want to take the embossing um, the embossing ink and it kept absorbing and absorbing and absorbing and then I put so much on there and I finally got it glossy and then it peeled away from, it delaminated, it peeled away from the back of the paper. So I peeled that off and I flipped it over and I put more embossing powder on. I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat, but it was kind of a pain in the butt and I spent a lot of time coloring that and I thought, I'm going to do something a little simpler. This was on deli paper and I stamped it and I embossed it with black and then I colored it and looked great and then I went to do the clear and when I heated it up, all the black embossing powder just uh, just bled into the clear. So that wasn't so hot. Um, but then I came to a technique that I really liked with this paper. This is um, uh, just some printmaking paper. You could use any cardstock that takes embossing well, like with the you emboss and it doesn't um, it doesn't absorb into the paper. Some papers just absorb the embossing powder. I'm not sure why. Um, so this is on printmaking paper and then you can crack it and give it kind of like a cracked glass look to makes it look even more cool. And there's no, well, you can see a little bit of the bleed through on that from the embossing powder, but it was pretty cool. I would use this as a card topper. All right, so how do we use this, Lindsay? You're probably wondering. Um, what you're going to need is is um, you could stamp either first. I think I'm going to stamp the um, the crackly background first, and I'm using Versafine Onyx Black because uh, it embosses. It'll um, well, it, cap it captures really good detail, but um, I'm really not going to emboss this layer. So you could use any of your favorite black ink pads. Really, it doesn't matter. Just something that's not going to run when you use your markers with it. And I'm going to use watercolor markers, but you could use whatever you have. I think, I don't think that really matters. And I'm just, I like the rocking mounts because um, I know I'll get good contact with the paper. All right, so there is the stained glass base. And then as soon as I saw that, I thought, I really want to do this with this old iris stamp that I have. And this is like an old Anita stamp. I, you know, remember that? They, I don't think they're around anymore, but you know, they're, they're very inexpensive. But I just, um, I have a few of those in my stash and I, I like irises, so. I'm just trying, I'm, I probably will pull this off the mount at some point and trim it because um, it's not trimmed as closely as I like and I keep getting ink on the uh, on the rubber where I don't want it, like on these edges. So I'm just kind of trying to wipe that off before I stamp. So that's going to come off the mount and be trimmed at some point and it might not make it back on the mount. All right, so I'm going to center that up as best I can, hopefully without getting my head in the way and just press it straight down to stamp. And I like to give my uh, stamps a couple minutes, not minutes, my goodness, a couple seconds, for the ink to transfer just to make sure I did it good. Hopefully that's a good impression. Oh, not too bad. Now I'm gonna take my Micron black pen and I'm gonna extend the lines from the, um, from my blades of grass here and my iris stems. There we go, I'm just gonna quickly put that in there. You know, you could take as much time as you like. I just want to make sure that I have that in there. And any um, lines that I feel like I've lost, I can go in with a micron and fill them in. So that's a nice thing about using a black ink pad. If you have a black pen, you can go in and fill it in. The microns are waterproof, so I know I'll be fine going over that with my waterproof markers. Now, so the downside, I'm using Reeves BFK printmaking paper. And the downside is that it, while it's smooth, it's not quite as smooth as like your stamping cardstock. So you may find that your image isn't going to stamp as black and as dark and as continuous as you would get with um, you with a regular stamping cardstock, but that's what I wanted to use today. So that's what I'm using. Use what you have on hand before you go buy new. All right, now I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what I'm doing when I color. Yeah, if I zoomed out, you know, you'd see the huge mess. It's on my table because I have everything I bought from the stamp show there. Uh, why don't I blast it just for a second with a heat gun to ensure that it's dry before I color so I don't smudge that black. Seems to darken up a little bit as I'm drawing it. That's kind of neat. All right. Now, again, take your time coloring here. I am just going to do it quickly because... Uh, I am, I don't want this video to take forever. These, uh, this distress marker is kind of giving me a hard time. I, first it was coming off, everything was so dark, and now it's super dry. 
I've had kind of a, a few oddballs. I don't have that many distress markers, and some of them are very, very finicky. This was just so juicy a little while ago that it was giving me globs of ink, and now it's dry. It's just a very, very fickle, fickle marker. I better switch. I'm gonna go outside of the lines of that for sure. But the, you know, the nice thing about your water-based markers is that you can try some from this brand, some from that brand, and um, you know, they'll all work together. And then it's nice, so you don't have to go out and buy a whole set before you've decided exactly what you like the best. My favorite so far are the Tombow and the Memento. I should have picked up some more Tombow markers. They had them open stock at the stamp show, but I just wasn't sure what I already had, so I didn't, and um, well, that's all right. There's always the internet for ordering. I don't like to grab stuff if I'm not sure, and then have doubles if I don't need them, you know? And I can layer over to create some more depth of color. I might want to go in there with a darker green. Luckily, all of those are within reach. I just Luckily, my water glass was empty because I just dumped it to the floor. I have like one square foot of working space here, <laughs> and even that is kind of a uh, kind of messy. I have not, I, well, you know, I did my haul video last night, and I did start to put some stuff away because, you know, I like to, you know, know where my things are when I want to go use them. Um, so I did put some stuff away, but it's been trashed again since I've been working in here. I'm just going to use this, uh, this big brush pit pen. This is India ink, but you can also use this with all your water-based markers, and you can blend them with your watercolor markers. So that's, uh, that's cool. When it's dry, it will be permanent, but until it's dry, you can, you know, blend it with the other colors. So I like that. Um, and they do have a lot of juice in them. The tips wear down, but for some reason, I find water-based markers, the brush tips wear down a lot quicker than alcohol markers. I don't know if it's just the, the moisture in there making it, I don't know, because I, I don't know, maybe it like makes the, the tip of the brush kind of swell or something, and I don't know, it seems like it's hard to keep a nice sharp point on a water-based marker. Anyone else notice that? Or is it just me? Maybe I just use them to death and I should replace them more often instead of refilling them. That's probably, uh, that's probably why. They're probably designed to last as long as their, uh, their nibs will. I like to turn it around while I'm working. Oh, apologies for the upside uh, down merchandise on the haul video yesterday. I was so tired. I was just, uh, you get rusty. I don't know how these people that only do like a video, one or two videos a month, you know, keep the chops up because I get, if I don't do a video every day, I get rusty in between times. Hopefully this isn't too rough to watch. And my voice sounds a little strange. I think it's uh, having that uh, city air. So I know city air makes my uh, makes my voice hoarse. My country, my country air, my good old Maine country air. The stamp show was so much fun. I'm so I'm really glad I grabbed these the stamp. I'll put a link to it. I, I well I think actually I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure DRS Designs has a website. They probably say so on the uh, DRSDesigns.com. Yep, they they do. I'm just looking at my package. They do. I'm not lying. Um, so I'll put a link to this stamp if I can find it on their website so you can get it. They have a couple different sizes, but I thought the big ones would be the most versatile because you can always cut it into a different size. So I got the big circle and square. Probably didn't need the circle, but it was a little bit of the oval, but it was a little bit bigger than the other. Um, then the square, like a little wider, so I thought, oh, what the heck. I was having a good time spending my money down at the stamp show. Uh, I'm just going to go into my letter color. I would take more time if I wasn't doing a video, but you're going to get the gist. And, uh, you know, I don't want to waste that much of your time. I want you to be off to the races, off to your projects as soon as you can be. I just think I love the concept. I love it when I find something that's so unique and helps me use my stash a little bit better. I missed a spot. I missed a couple spots here, one there. Hopefully this covers over that. Yep, it does. Ha, huh. wonderful. I love it when that happens. I love it when I don't totally trash a piece of artwork or stamp work, whatever you want to call it. There we go. We're just coloring. It's just color. Nothing to worry about, friends. Whoops, I hit the tripod. Oh, my goodness. You know, it is, I'm probably giddy because it's so darn warm out. It's like 90 degrees or something. It's crazy. The uh, It was warm this morning when the kids went off to school, and I said, you know what? If it's not raining and you guys get out of school, I will take you for a swim. So I think we'll be hitting a little lake nearby the lake pretty soon today if we, oh, we definitely will be. It's like 90 degrees and it's sunny. I don't think we're going to be getting any any storms knock on wood. Of course, this is Maine. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. It will change, but I think we'll be, I think we'll be 
good. Take the dog for a swim too. She's probably roasting in her fur coat. And I'm just blending together with this. This is a printmaking paper, 100% cotton, so it will allow me to uh, to kind of blend these colors around without the um, without the paper peeling up too bad. Now, just to make it look a little more stained glassy, I am going to go and randomly color in some of these background sh uh, shapes with this darker marker, Daka Maka. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just go around, get your get your thing colored just the way you want. If it's your first time trying a technique, you might not want to spend a long time coloring it like I did with this one. I love the coloring of it. I was so wait, is that one? No, that's the good one. That's a good one I just did. I meant this one. You know, I spent a lot of time coloring that. I probably should have just kind of uh, just done a really quickie coloring and then and then uh, tried my technique just to make sure it would work. Um, but it was fun, and it was funny. We had this conversation in the car driving home from the stamp show, and I was talking to my friend Kathy, who does Ask a Crafter with me, and we were just discussing our methods for working, and um, see, I had big plans to do a garden. I know I shared that with you guys. Um, but then, like, all the thinking about it, all the researching, I decided that, you know what? That's too much work. I really don't think I want to do a garden. So, like, I get myself psyched out. If I think about something too long and plan it and research it, then I will be bored with it and over it, and it'll. I just won't even attempt it. I have to jump in when I get the idea. And um, Kathy said, well, you know, I feel that if I research something before I do it, then I can avoid a lot of the pitfalls. Um, and I have pitfalls, but I will remember my mistakes. So it's just funny how people approach things. And if you're a little more on the cautious side, you might want to just jump in and try it. You know, try something. Because, you know, like this, it's just a little piece of paper. It's not going to harm anything if it doesn't turn out perfect. All right, so now what we're going to do is um, give this a second to dry. And then we are going to add some ink and some embossing powder. Now, I want to make sure before I press my ink pad on there that this is dry. So I'm heating it with my heat gun. La di da, here we go. Heating it right up. It's funny, I've actually been to Massachusetts twice this month. Last weekend, I went to go see a Red Sox game, which I took pictures and I thought I'd be scrapbooking them by now, but guess not. Um, we saw the Red Sox versus the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Sox won. So I'm glad I saw that game instead of the one against the Tigers because they didn't do so hot. Not that I'm a big baseball fan unless my kids are playing, but you know. It was neat. I'd never been to a, um, a professional game before, so that was kind of fun. All right, so now I'm just going to sprinkle this with my ultra-thick embossing powder. You can use regular clear embossing powder. It's got to be clear, um, otherwise you won't be seeing your picture anymore. Um, but you just need a little to, you know, you'll just need to heat it up and coat it a couple more times with regular. I'll want to coat, uh, coat it two or three times with the uh, UT. So this is what it looks like when you begin. Now I will, um, I'll, I'll heat it up here on camera so you can see how long it takes because it does take a little bit of time. I always have to adjust to get my, get the right hands holding everything. So I want, I try to hold it so you can kind of see it as it melts. It gets very glassy and glossy. Look at it, and it makes the colors really vivid. So you don't even need to spend that much time coloring it because it's going to look gorgeous. Now, if you did this on like um, some more translucent paper, and then you added the powder to the back, you could make some like uh, translucent window window catchers, sun catchers. That would be kind of pretty. Now, if you're really quick which I'm usually not, but if you're really quick, sometimes you can go ahead over it with the embossing powder and give it a coat and heat it up again and not have to ink it. I'm usually not quick enough to do that, but we'll see. Yeah, see, it's only sticking to part of the image, but we'll see. Might, all that might blow away too. We'll, we'll see how we do. I'm gonna have to wash this mat that's on my table because it's covered in dust and grime and, well, mostly embossing powder dust, but still, it's kind of yucky. I decided to put the felt side up because it looked better in videos, but boy, it gets dirty and I can't wipe it down. And I'm going to see if I can dump one more coat on there without having to use the ink pad again. You know, but if you're slower, just uh, just press the ink pad on it again and, uh, and sprinkle it, it's fine. Just make sure it's cool before you press the ink pad on it because it will. Um, sometimes all the ink, all the powder will get stuck to your ink pad and that's not what you want. Oh, see, I get 
all confused. I got my stuff on the wrong side, really. Got to get that out of the way. I don't want to melt the embossing in the powder in the can. That'd be awful. And the reason, and you know, fast forward to this part, if you've seen this before, the reason I'm doing this is because whenever I don't, I have somebody asking me, uh, how long, how, what did you do there? What is that powder and what did you do to it? You know, there's always um, newcomers to the hobby that watch the videos and I want to make sure that every once in a while I show this process all the way through so that you, um, so that they know what to do. All right, so there we have, um, our little piece that we'll want to cut out. Now, if I tip this, you can see it's kind of pebbly. So really, I'd want to let this cool, press this on it again, and then do another coat of embossing powder. So here's what I've already done, and I coated it and cut it out. And then, if you bend it, you can get some little cracks in it. You can kind of hear it. And you don't have to do this. I'm just going to wipe off. I got some sprinkled some powder on there by mistake when I was uh, Mussing the other one, but there you get this really cool, um, cool panel that you can put on a card. So experiment with the different papers you have. Um, you might even try this stamping this on um, vellum and maybe not embossing it, or maybe using stays on, or maybe coloring it from the back side or on acetate. I mean, you could do it on acetate, stamp it on one side, color it from the back, and use it just like that. Make yourself a sun catcher or something. Um, again, the stamps were from DRS Designs, DRSDesigns.com. If I don't happen to put a link up there, because I'm liable to forget. I do that a lot. This one's by Anita's, but you can use whatever you want for your focal image, and I hope you try it, because it's so much fun. And probably on the blog in a day or two, I'll have a picture of a card I've made with one of these <laughs> one of these samples. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up, and until next time, happy crafting.